What's up, y'all? Welcome back. I'm Van. We are all the LFR family. Much love to you all. Lefties are losing it. Let's go. Let's go. I said, let go. And where would this segment be without the ladies of The View? And they're chronically clueless, always, always spectacularly stupid takes Whoa. on everything. Whoa. Take it away, Whoopi. I would caution the media to be very careful about what they're doing and how they're this because what they seem to be doing is pushing a narrative that people are pushing against which students are pushing against which I'm thrilled to see because I like when students get mad and say we want a change made you know it's time Karen Karen Elaine Johnson stopped appropriating a Jewish name she's not Jewish and she has no Jewish ancestry and let's not forget her rather disgraceful comments about the Holocaust just being about white on white violence. And it wasn't just her, it was Sonny Hostin as well, uh, standing with these campus thugs. The students that I have spoken to at many of the Ivy League schools and a student that I did speak to also at Emory, where a professor was thrown to the ground simply for asking the police, what are you doing to these peacefully protesting students? Um, the, the students are telling me this is a humanitarian crisis. Of course, she has no idea. Sunny, uh, that professor was thrown to the ground because she hit an officer on the head, which she admitted to as she was led away in handcuffs. Yeah. She said, and, and Sunny tried to act like they, they took her down for simply saying, could you please leave these beautiful kids alone in the name of Jesus? Ah, ah, why you hit me? Why you beat me in the back? Why you choking me? Why you kick me in the dingling? It didn't happen that way. The lady hit the police officer and she got exactly what she daggone deserved. Yeah, she was stupid enough to admit to that on camera. And let's check in with one of these brave student protesters from an Ivy League college that costs upwards of $70,000 a year US. Here is one of these students uh, and she's asked, wow. why should Columbia be required to feed students who have illegally taken over a facility? Listen to this rather demented answer. Uh well, for, first of all, we're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. But you mentioned that there was a request to, that food and water be brought in, unless I misunderstood. To allow it to be brought in. I mean, well, I guess it's ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation Columbia feels it has to its students. Um, do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation or get severely ill, even if they disagree with you? If the answer is no, then you should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? No, you can't have a glass of damn water. You bucking the system. You're now our enemy. Get the hell out of our face. You will not get no water. And guess what? Ain't nobody going to deliver you no water. Unless y'all already have water. Or you take somebody from this protest and y'all go and try to sneak some water. No, you're done. We're cutting you off. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping them. His views went up 4.8 million percent. We're super excited. If anybody ever want to grow on YouTube, you reach out to me with the word coach. You want to play big boy games? You want to act grown when you're only a stupid little child? Then go ahead, act grown. But you got to deal with the consequences. F-A-F-O. That's how that work. She goes from demanding Columbia feed her and her ilk to claiming they are stopping them from purchasing their own food and water and having it delivered. When she is reminded that they've put themselves in this predicament, she comes up with a whole new story. But they, they did put themselves in that very deliberately in that situation and in that position. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying we want to be revolutionaries. We want to take up this building. Now would you please bring us food and water? Nobody's asking them to bring anything. Every, we're, we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing in basic humanitarian doing. aid. They're stopping the delivery of food? 
I, we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it. But they haven't stopped it. We, well, I don't. I'm not. I don't know to what extent it has been attempted, but we're looking for a commitment. They watch too many bank heist movies. That's what they did. They watch way too many bank heist movies. Um, I want a helicopter, uh, four pieces, some onion rings, um, a cheeseburger with no mayo, no mayo on the cheeseburger. If I see mayo on the cheeseburger, I'm shooting a hostage. These kids are ridiculous. I was about to use the other R word, but God has been working on me. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. That is a Columbia student, a PhD candidate, no less. She's supposed to be one of our brightest minds, but she's quite clearly as thick as a brick, uh, but a lot less useful. Now let's look at some of these college kids from the University of South Florida. First clip, they're acting all tough. They're saying there that uh, they are united. They will not be divided. But watch what happens within 10 seconds, literally 10 seconds of the cops rolling in. <laughs> they're not too united there that was much easier than everyone expected uh, well that's how they handle things in florida but in lefty heartland california the violent mobs rule look at this independent journalist they're harassed they're intimidated and this poor guy also had his property stolen by these charmers Stop pushing me! Stop pushing me! You're restricting my movement right now. This is false incarceration. This is false incarceration. I'm allowed to be in here. I'm a journalist, credential. Okay, this is public property. Oh, hey, lock arms, lock arms. Oh, here we go. Apparently, no free press here exists. We don't allow aggressive people. Oh, my gracious, man. Protests seem so fun. I need to go protest something. I need to go protest something and demand my respect. Demand my freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Demand my freedom. Yeah, America. I want my goddamn on freedom. I want my reparations. My 40 acres and my mule. Hmm? Get my 40 acres and my mule, please. Thank you very much. I want it right there. Put it right there in my hand. Hmm? Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me that funk, that sweet, that funk, that gushy stuff. Give it to me. Give me that funk, that sweet, that funk, that gushy stuff. That's Rick James, just in case y'all don't know. Some of y'all don't know who Rick James is. It's okay. And not knowing who Rick James is does not make you racist necessarily. All right? All right. All right. But y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know about this in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, what the heck are y'all waiting for? Shout out to all of y'all. Every single last one of my one million subscribers. Y'all are dope. Y'all are the bee's knees. Y'all are the cat meow and the dog's bow wow. And I appreciate y'all. And so does every other content creator. Appreciate you all. And lastly, I want to say shout out to everyone who's in my coaching group. Y'all are absolutely amazing. Y'all are making a dream come true. I didn't know that this would be capable. I mean, that I'd be capable of showing other people of all walks of life, all ethnicities, all races, races, how to do what I do. And they actually get some success from it. It's so dope, man. I'm so proud of these guys. They're doing a job. They're doing, a, they're doing an amazing job. They're growing like crazy. Most of the people that are working with me are reaching monetization of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in less than 30 days. And that's with long form content, not with shorts. That's with long form content. And let me just add this too. A couple of them are making some pretty good money already. Already. 
That really makes me feel good right there. That really, really makes me feel good. Love y'all. See y'all on the next video. Peace out. I'm a poor person. Of course I carried before I married. My name's Haley. My name's Matthew, and we're pregnant. <laughs> what did he say? I'm a poor person. Of course I went to college. I'm a poor person. Of course I buy depreciating assets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm a poor person. Of course I'm getting divorced. I'm a Yes. I'm a poor person. Of course I don't raise my kids in the home with their father. You are not. <laughs> I'm a poor person. Of course I don't restrain myself sexually. Duh. And he'd be like, damn, I wish I had some head. I'd be like, yo, bro, I got you. I'm a poor person. Of course I won't read the ass backwards way to move forward. LFR Family Live Event. Exclusive interview with Celeste Duffy, author of The Ass Backwards Way to Move Forward, May 10 at 8 o'clock p.m. EST.